Good morning, folks. We've got some fun announcements at the end of the show. We'll hit the sun, weather, and then particle physics, ancient people, and plasma science in the research coverage. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on the sun with a coronal hole turning through Earth-facing heliographic longitudes. Still no sunspots, but we do have the plasma filaments getting active once again. Their dance has been visible in the ionized iron return here and in ionized helium, showing the massive ropes dancing in the corona. As for the coronal hole, its solar wind has two to three days until arrival, but the current sheet impact interaction began last night. Just before the new day, UTC, the magnetism of the solar wind flipped and a denser sector came with it. It's nothing huge, but it tells us the coronal hole stream impact is coming and gave us our first three on the KP index since the cosmic ray zero day alerts a few days ago. We're going to Europe. First is a tornado that tore through Kalamata, Greece, and that was followed by the flooding in Montenegro. Folks, it was a few days ago that we set that alert for the storms rolling through the region, and indeed this footage is from the last two or three days as the rescue efforts were higher priority than filming and posting to social media. We also said we'd come back to the cyclones and typhoons, and the two in focus here are ready to charge the coast. Bay of Bengal will see its system nestle in the north, while central Vietnam is going to watch the other one approach it. Wanted to get a quick look at the system that lit up in the states overnight, even with the cold and snow dominating the north and western sides of the system, the energy on the southeast, very evident. And the October climate report is out for the United States, one of the colder months on record as we go from daily maximum charts to daily minimum. Huge swaths of record cold on the mark as the next cold blast is already arriving now. ESA satellites have completed their temperature at depth look at the Antarctic ice. The color scale and Kelvin units make this confusing, so I added Fahrenheit on there as well. Indeed, the entire color scale below is freezing, below freezing actually. After all, they are measuring the temperature at various depths within the ice. Article is linked below. For those tracking the movements of humans during the great upheavals of the past, this is a new one on what are likely last champ magnetic excursion driven migrations a little over 40,000 years ago. Always good to catch up on those past disasters and this one details the human movement through Europe and down into Israel. Fun little FYI up next, the latest electron scattering detail of proton size is offering a 6% readjustment from the last such measurement. Maybe it's just me, but 6% seems pretty big when talking about things they should know, like the size of a proton, unless, of course, it changes. Had fun reading this article, discussing how massive ship trails in the ocean are actually cooling the regions due to the cloud effect. This is the original cloud seeding, as such trails were known 80 years ago, and they are detailing here how the climate regulation on sulfur in the exhaust is reducing that cloud effect which means it's causing more sunlight to reach the surface, which means the climate rules are stopping the ships from cooling the planet. Oops. Folks, this next one feels similarly edgy. Complementing the widespread discoveries of wildly higher natural sources of carbon release from things like streams, bogs, oceans, etc., turns out one of the human effects is hugely overrated. While this definitively hurts the human blame for climate story, as much as anything else, I can't say I am any closer to being a fan of deforestation after reading it. We do like the trees. And now, we're moving on because a paper that came out last week has had my imagination racing. Before a quick insight, let's take a moment to go back in time and look at magnetic reconnection, how Alfane himself and more recently Dr. Peratt described the electrical process that mainstream science calls reconnection and some of how it's gone wrong. Let's head back to 2017. Who among you fully understands the mainstream physics of magnetic reconnection and potential conflicts with Alfin's words in the classic work Cosmic Plasma? It isn't the easiest concept to get one's head around, even if it can be represented conceptually in a very simple way. While not always in this configuration, the concept is that magnetic current breaks and reconnects with another field, transferring energy that is stored in the magnetic fields. Problem is, when you bring two magnets together, it doesn't work. Apologies for the yellow, but I knew what I was looking for in the book and didn't want to waste a lot of time finding it. 
every electric circuit is explosive in that if disrupted, it will release the whole energy of the system at the point of disruption. This sounds a lot like the magnetic reconnection in mainstream science looks, so with Alfin discussing current circuit energy and mainstream describing energy stored in the magnetic fields, how do we connect the dots or is there a disconnect? Let's continue reading. Alfin cautions against the concept of frozen in magnetic field lines, a concept which dominates space plasma physics, especially because it is only valid as a relative descriptor in some situations and offers the impression of understanding where it is in fact lacking. Clearly, on the very next page, we see that space plasma rarely satisfies the requirements of modeling frozen in lines, and further, it is not valid to use the concept in the outer magnetosphere or interplanetary space. This is why we keep seeing serious scientists demanding a rewrite or at least a reconsideration of the characterization of the energy behind these explosive events, even if a magnetic field reconnection is a very adequate way of qualitatively describing what effects result in the aftermath. So since we've got three US-based scientists here looking into reconnection-based conundrums, perhaps they will see this video. And since Alfin's cosmic plasma is not cited among their references, I'd suggest they go looking for cracks in the foundation, rather than trying to figure out which coat of paint looks best. And we are back to today. After the first 20 pages of that book, it gets complex, but a nice review begins on page 78. Because of the complexity of plasma science, the simplifications they have used in the mainstream have turned that science into an abstract mental exercise with lots of incorrect assumptions. Things like plasma noise or the ultra-energizing of electrons are not well understood or modeled. They falsely apply these bad scenarios to things like the magnetosphere of Earth and miss applying it to the molecular clouds that form stars. Well, actually, that last one got fixed by Sophia and Alma the last year or so, but Alfane didn't know that was going to happen before he died. So we come back now to the concept that the real electric action they call reconnection forms plasmoids. This is not at all dissimilar to the energetic star ignition processes or earlier galactic ignition processes in the cosmos, the ones envisioned by the plasma cosmology. So sticking with that subject, an excellent examination of that magnetic effect on star formation has been underway. Once again, the plasma turbulence is hard to model without all the other pieces in place, so they're trying to nail down the magnetic fields first. In doing so, we see much of the same ideas on how those fields are playing a greater role than was traditionally believed, key image being this one. Magnetic field lines bending in to where the stars are being formed almost like a pinch. Well, not almost, that's what it is. And so, three cheers for this Canadian cosmology team as their entire National Science Collective is doing the rest of century white paper planning, and these guys are recognizing 100% where the future of astronomy lies, with the electromagnetic astrophysical plasmas. Folks, in this photo, I am the ugly one. My wife Kat is our CEO, she runs our annual conference, and authors our children's books. That's our kids, Kira and Noah, below, and today, we publicly announce the approach of Adam, due to make his terrestrial appearance in March. Regarding our annual conference, the last week we got Robert Felix from Ice Age Now and Dr. Aravik from Haruni's Antenna to agree to speak at the conference. Felix and Aravik joined Doug Vogt, Randall Carlson, Stephen Crothers, and special guest Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille, August Dunning, myself, and more for the Awake Science event of the year. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.